Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. This is episode number 477. And tonight we're going to learn how to post-process and stitch together 360 video from our two butt-to-butt Pano View 360 cameras. This is going to be a lot of fun. You saw us on episode number 475, Sasha and I filming that, and we're going to actually put that together tonight. Good times. We're going to learn all about it. You want to stick around? Sasha Dermatis over in the newsroom. How are you? I am great. Thank you. Here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Tesco Bank halted online payments Monday after money was taken from 20,000 accounts. Samsung has explosive deals on washers. Oh wait, sorry, I read that wrong. Samsung washers are exploding. Mythbuntu is dead. And, as it turns out, Nintendo NES Classic is basically a mini Linux computer with 30 RAM. With 30 ROMs, sorry. And KDE has a nice looking mobile OS gearing up to replace Android on your smartphone. Stick around, full te- details are coming up later in the show. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Our live recordings are trusted only to solid-state drives by Kingston Technology. Revive your computer with improved performance and reliability over traditional hard drives with Kingston SSDs. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. Help me welcome tonight, Jeff Weston. I'm here. And over in the newsroom, hey, Sasha Dermatis. Hey, everybody. Keeping well? Ready to rock this? Have a fun show? Absolutely. I'm excited. Sasha, you and I, a couple weeks back on episode number 475, we were looking at uh, our 360 video camera rig. That's right. And, and uh, how fun it was, the Halloween special. Uh-huh. I'm excited to see this. Yeah, so we were all in our Halloween garb, all yeah. steampunked out. I'm sad Sorry, Jeff. You know, I was really looking forward to that episode. But I it always just didn't work. Out. I'm watching for t- at times when I can dress up as steampunk and it's actually, like, cool. Just do it anyway. I was thinking, you know, I've, I've been I've been shopping around at electronic super centers where I'm getting like capacitors and and resistors and relays and doing all this kind of thing. And then, you know, in a store like this, I could probably get away with it. You'd probably get a, maybe maybe uh, maybe. I would think more so hardware store for steampunk. I mean, if you're dealing with capacitors and whatnot. Like a like an auto wrecker. <laughs> Just like, hey, I'm here for some parts, and they they totally totally get it at that that's point. Right. Yeah, that's right. Need to build new glasses. <laughs> yeah, I got you the got goggles. Tailpipe. Got the whole thing. All right, so Sasha, uh, so back on episode number four seventy five. Check it out if you haven't already seen it. Sasha and I held up our video camera rig. This is two. 360 by 220 degree video cameras. Of course, well, why is it 360 by 220 and not 360 all the way around, right? So let's just take this rig apart so that you can see exactly how this works. So there's the, the bottom of the camera and a great big lens on the top. Mm-hmm. So, of course, there's a body to the camera. So it can't see through that. It has to film like this. Right. But it actually gets a little bit further than the whole, you know, than the 180 here and gets down to 220 and gives you this view. So in order to get the full 360, so that's both sides, we need two lenses. Right. One on one, one side and one on the other. So we crafted this little rig here uh, with a quarter inch adapter and two of these cameras that are available on the cheap from cat5.tv slash action cam. And you just screw them together and suddenly you've got a full 360 by 360 rig. In fact, even more so, we've got some overlap between the two cameras, so we're able to remove some of the additional things from the scene using parallaxing, such as the tripod that it's sitting on. Right. So you don't actually okay. see the tripod, because remember, it sees 220 right. and 220, so we can remove whatever's in the middle. Very sneaky. I love parallaxing. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And 360, okay, well, let's talk a little bit about 360 video. It's on the rise, mm-hmm. uh, especially because, you know, Christmas is coming, and a lot of folks are going to be getting these. And these are available at cat5.tv slash cardboard, incidentally. But uh, what They're it does... Plastic. <laughs> it's based on uh, Google's cardboard yes. design. I get that. You put your phone in here, and your phone supports VR, and then that goes in here, and it has lenses that make it so that it, it, it separates the two sides of the screen and makes it look amazing when your phone is in cardboard mode. 
that's cool when it comes down to 360 video because you've also got an accelerator, uh, accelerometer in your phone. Mm -hmm. So as you look around, you're in fact able to look around the video. So with a, th a full 360 by 360 video, you can look up and down and all around. You can turn around and see what's behind you. It's pretty impressive. And that's on the cheap. Like those go for about $20 yeah. US. Crazy cheap. Okay, so you don't have to go out and get Oculus Rift and you know something in the hundreds of dollars. So it gets you started with 360 video. These cameras are consumer cameras, and because we're doing it this way, we're able to do it quite cheaply mm -hmm. because each camera is under $100. Now, are these the same cameras that we filmed the kickoff for Season 10 with? Yes, so if you want to watch Episode number 471 in full 360 view, you'll be able to see what they look like and how it works. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of post-production that goes into this because you do end up with two 360 by 220 videos. Well, what do you do with that? It, these shoot spherical video. So basically the video, as you're going to see tonight, is a circle. And so we have to actually post-process those so that they become viewable on your goggles or on YouTube or whatever other you know, device that you want to use. Um, and then eventually we're actually going to show you how to convert it to standard video as well using Blender so that you can actually watch it on a computer or a TV where virtual reality and movement is not actually possible. That's cool. Because aqua, aqua rectangular and spherical video looks really weird in its raw format. Very, very weird. You have to either view it on a device that supports it or convert it to a, a different format. We're going to learn all of that throughout the course of the series. So it started with episode number 475, where we shot the video and explained a little bit more than I have tonight about how the camera rig works. So you want to tune into that. We also did the unboxing of those cameras. That is at category5.tv. Check out episode number 475. You can use the search at the top in order to find that. I've got my trusty laptop all set up here tonight, and uh, we've got our videos ready to go. So I'm just going to carefully move this over here out of the way. And I say that because I know that I am liable to pull cables out of the back as I move it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So I've got just a, and now here's one of the things is that unfortunately the, the free tools that are available right now are limited because this is a brand new technology folks. This is, and you're going to see over the next couple of months. Now we're filming this November 9th, 2016. So we're gonna see a real transition because as companies are gearing up for Christmas season, this stuff is, is really going to be hitting the consumer market hard. Um, right now, there are n very, very few 4K plus um, video cameras that will shoot um, 360 video on the consumer end of things. So consider that each of these two cameras is a 4K 30 frames per second camera. Okay, so I have 8K of video all the way around. Mm -hmm. It's huge resolution. It's astonishing. And, they're, and the whole rig costs about 200 bucks. So it's less than buying, say, a Theta S. But a Theta S is only 1080p. This is 8K. Right. Right? So that's pretty impressive. we're seeing this huge transition in the technology that's available. Now, Nikon has brought out the Key Mission 360 as well. Their Key Mission line, I have little experience with them. Um, so far... I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence. I'm not too sure whether I, I want to endorse them or not at this point. Um, and the key thing is, is because my experience with the Key Mission 170 is that they overheat. These never had any problem with that. Um, so there are different things to look take into account as well. I'll see how they did with the 360 camera as soon as we get one. Um, but the nice thing about the Nikon Key Mission 360 is like the Theta S, it has the two lenses built in and it has the stitching software provided with it. But because we're going to be doing this on a bit of a makeshift, real dirt cheap, like this is way cheaper than doing the Nikon model, for example, as well, probably half the price. We're gonna use free software from Kodak. Kodak brought out a, uh, a camera called the PixPro 4K, yep. and it's very, very similar to what we're using tonight, but more expensive. So with the PixPro, they've released the software freely available on their website, uh, and uh, I've actually made some notes. It's Kodak pixpro.com so if you want to you know get that software and do what we're doing here tonight um, then you can actually do that first of all Jeff I want to show you why it's necessary to post process the video so okay. I'm gonna bring up the video that Sasha and I had done and as I was saying with the pixpro software the one thing is that it is Windows software so here I am on Windows 10 on this laptop here are the two sides of the camera 
that Sasha and I shot. So this is what it looks like coming off the camera. So if I bring that up, there it is. That's us firing it up. And there's what the video actually looks like. It's spherical. So it's, it's basically kind of unwatchable in that format. <laughs> but that's how the camera shoots the video. It's pretty cool but not usable in that format. Here's the rear side of the camera. So this is the other view. So the other side of the camera when we had them back to back. Okay, so you can see how it is overlapping. You can see me in both videos. How's that even possible? That is impressive. Right? So, but it is spherical video. So you're gonna get to actually see through the course of this, you're gonna get to see how, um, how Wirecast works because you can see it on the screen there, all that kind of stuff. So that's what it looks like. Not really usable in that format. Right. YouTube, uh, most video pl uh, players that support 360 video are going to use a mode called Equa Rectangular. And you're going to learn through the course of this what that means. But basically what that is is it's a 4K 2 over 1 shot. So it's, it's hugely wide totally askew because the whole thing gets wrapped around the viewer right and it's okay. it's seamless so at the back where the two sides come together it's seamless so if if somebody were to walk by that 360 camera to you it's going to look like they go whoa like right completely okay. warped right in its raw format but then you watch it on a 360 viewer and it's going to turn out just fine and look really really cool so now, I have one, I mean, I mean, looking at these two files on your screen, you've yeah. got one camera that's upside down, the other one is is up normally. Mm -hmm. Is that because just the way the cameras are positioned, is that yeah. something you have to fix later, or? Yes. Okay. So you see, for so example, it's not the way it records on my, it that way. It just records it that way. So on my camera rig, you can see, okay, so here's the power, these cameras are identical, even though they're different colors. We've got the power button on this side on the black one, okay, power button on this side, Okay. on the white one. Right. And that's just because of the way the threading is. Because right. I, okay. I wouldn't want it to be so loose that they're both aligned perfectly and right. this is jiggling like this. No, I want it to be fairly tight and I'm, I'm working at a 90 degree, so I'm trying to make it as close to 90 degrees as possible because right. then what I'll do is I'll digitally rotate one of those videos. Makes sense. Okay. okay. So we're going to learn how to do that tonight in the stitching software. But first, we've got to prepare these videos for that stitching process. And when I say stitching, what it means is to take those two spherical videos, so think of the two lenses of the camera, put them together and seamlessly adapt them so that it becomes a full sphere, not just two individual hemispheres. So we have to prepare these two videos together. Um, first of all, let's, uh, let's learn how to obtain this software. So uh, it's called PixPro is the name of the camera from Kodak. So I'm going to head on over to KodakPixPro.com. I think it is. Uh, oh, you know what? My Wi-Fi is just turned off on the laptop. So I'll just enable that. Here we go. That would be why it didn't work. And we're off and running. There we go. Okay, so Kodak pixpro.com. You'll see those cameras are fairly similar as far as their layout and how they work. Uh, but let's go into support. And let's go into, let's find the downloads here. Downloads for PixPro. And so will this software work with any camera? Uh, essentially, the, with the with the single hemisphere, um, 360 by 180 to 220 cameras, yeah, okay. it should work just fine. And it's freely available, but it is only, I believe it's only Windows. There may be a Mac version. I'm going to find out in just a moment's time here. Okay. Um, but as far as my platforms go, there was nothing available for Linux. I have not tried this through Wine. It would be interesting to note whether or not it would work in Wine. It may because it isn't uh, using any video for Windows or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it'd be interesting to find that out. So I've clicked on Downloads. I'm just waiting for their website, which seems reasonably slow tonight. But that's essentially where we're going to get that tool. Fortunately for me, if they are having trouble with the site or wireless on my laptop, uh, I've already got it installed. Okay. So, uh, so Kodak Pix, P-I-X, pro.com. I'm going to leave that loading. And in the meantime, I'm going to bring up the software. So here it is. The first thing that we need to do is we need to actually, you'll see that there are two Pix Pro softwares here. The first one is called SP360 4K. That's the one that we need to use in order to prepare our video 
to be stitched. We can't just load our video directly into the PixPro stitching software because it's going to detect, hey, that's not a PixPro camera. Right, okay. So we're not going to work with that. We're going to say, no, that camera is not compatible. Oh, my downloads have come up. Uh, and then we'll come back. So this is the 4K compatible, like it's exactly the same as the 4K model that we want to use. Don't go with the non 4K version. Um, so let's see. This is the camera user manual. This kind of gets you. See at the top here, it says camera user manual. Uh, what we actually want to do is we want to go to PixPro software download for PC and Mac. So it is for Mac as well. So now scroll down. We've got PC. There's the download here and PC download here for the, uh, is that the stitching software? No. So this is the 4K software. So download that one. Scroll down a ways. Here's the 4K version of the stitching software. We want to download that one for PC or Mac, depending on your platform. Okay, so it's available right there on their website. Back here, okay, so the difference is this program is going to prepare our, our video for stitching. This one is going to actually stitch them together. So let's bring up PixPro SP364K uh, to work with these 4K cameras. There it is. Okay, so it says no photos and videos. So I'm just going to click on this disk down here. A little double tap, and then I'm going to uh, browse to where I stored those videos from my SD cards. And just a reminder that these cameras just simply store the video on SD cards. So all I had done before the show is just remove these Kingston SD cards and plug them into my laptop and copy them to the desktop. So Simple enough. There it is. So I've got both videos together. Perfect. Now, do, do these also have, like, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi transfer, or is it... Purely. These cameras have Wi-Fi access to your phone through an app, so you can actually oh, control okay. and view the, the uh, either pre-recorded or live video, okay. which is pretty cool. Um, it has HDMI output, but I have never figured out the reasoning behind that because it does not support um, clean HDMI output in any format, um, and it only supports playback of the pre-recorded files. So the HDMI is useless because it yeah. only plays back the spherical video. So what are you going to do with that? So the HDMI on these is useless. The output on uh, Wi-Fi is pretty cool because you can actually control it from your phone. So you can set that on a table or something, and you can go downstairs, and you can see the kids playing, and you can look around the room. Oh, right? Sneaky, That's pretty sneaky. neat. Yeah, kind of neat stuff. So I've copied the files off of those onto this laptop, as you've previously seen when I, uh, when I showed you the, the video clips in Spherical Video. So I'm just browsing to that folder here. And as soon as I click on it, you can see these two videos here. So when I click on either of these videos up here, you'll see that it converts it to a format that I can actually move around in. But it's kind of wonky because they're on a horizontal axis, right? I'm going to make this a little bit larger for you. There you go. So that's kind of crazy. So you see the black area below at the very bottom, the circle there? Yeah. That's looking at, the, so that's beyond the 220. Oh, okay. Right? So that if you only buy one camera, you're just going to have that black space down there, and you're not going to be able to look any further. Uh, if you have the two cameras, you're going to be able to look all the way around, and I could actually look down and see everything. So that's one video that I'm looking around there. I'm going to switch to the other video here just by single clicking and you can see that I can move around my glove. Cool. Oh, there's Sasha upside down. I can, you know what, I can move to a different point in the video so that I can see things a little better. There's Sasha, there's me in our garb. And it's really, really hard to navigate it in the same way in this format because I'm in this weird spherical mode where when I drag it goes all kind of wonky. I feel like I'm flying an X-Wing. Mm, so we need to convert this to full 360 views so that I can navigate it more properly. Hi, Sasha. I was waiting for her to say hi. And it's, it's, weird. it's so super weird to see me Is that, that strange? It's totally strange. Yeah. Well, you wait. This is pretty neat stuff. <laughs> so, okay. So, what I need to do is, with these two videos, Jeff, I simply need to save them. Okay. Because PixPro SP364K says, okay, I can open the, these files from this camera, even though it's not actually a PixPro. Right. But the stitching software cannot, because it says that's not from a PixPro camera. Right. So okay. if I import it first to PixPro uh, SP364K, free software, and save it from there, it saves it with the meta tags to tell the other software that this is actually from a PixPro camera. Nice. Ah, so we've just saved ourselves a couple hundred bucks sneaky, by buying sneaky. the other brand. Okay, so let's do it. Um, so it's as simple as this. Save as. I'm just going to throw it into uh, a subfolder of the one that I'm working in. 
360 video, 475, and I'm going to create, and we're going to call this uh, converted. And you'll see this is actually a very, very fast process. I'm going to hit save, and there it goes. And this is not a super fast laptop, but it's, um, it's moving along. We're at 50%. So then I need to do that with, uh, with my next video as well. Let's, there we go, finish. Okay, so that's done. Now this one. So you have to save, save. them individually. You can't save them as a, like. A full sphere? Well, you can't say, like, you can't say, like, save all. You can do batch processing, but I've found uh, in my tests that um, sometimes with the batch processing, frame rates can get, Oh, okay. uncoordinated and it, it can be problematic and it will detect files weirdly and okay. so yeah doing it this way you're you're basically just adding the meta tags to make it so that it works with the stitching software right. and that's where the magic really really happens okay. so that's already done and uh, so now when I now I'm done with this software that's literally all that I have to do I can close it out and I go into my 475 folder I've got my converted and they look exactly the same there are my videos, but they are tagged and ready to go and ready to be imported into our 360 stitching software. We're going to come right back uh, with more. We're going to actually learn how to stitch all this together and turn it into a full spherical video. And then we're going to learn how to export it and prepare it to be uploaded to YouTube. That way people can actually drag around and look around in our video, but also they can use their virtual reality headsets if they'd like uh, to exactly. be able to look around the video. Because we're working with a very short, like five minute video here tonight, Sasha, uh, that we recorded on episode 475, it's very, very zippy. Now, episode 471, on the other hand, was a two, two hour and 20 minute recording on both cameras. So a huge amount of post-processing went into that. Yeah. We're working with smaller files, um, so it's working quite nice and fast. But in the meantime, we've got to jump over to the newsroom and find out what's going on over there. And after that, we're going to come back and look at uh, finishing up our 360 video tonight. Stick around. All right, here are the stories we're covering this week in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Tesco Bank halted online payments at, on Monday after money was taken from 20,000 accounts. Samsung has explosive deals on washers. Oh wait, sorry, I read that wrong. Samsung washers are exploding. Mythbuntu is dead. As it turns out, Nintendo NES Classic is basically a mini Linux computer with 30 ROMs. And KDE has a nice looking mobile OS gearing up to replace, your, replace Android on your smartphone. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. Jeff Weston. Yeah, man. You're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? Oh, you're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. yeah, I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? You need hosting. One of the things about a hosting account is you don't want to have limitations put on your website. It's true. How much hard drive space do you have? How many email accounts? How many domains can point to it? Well, we've got an amazing deal for you. For a very limited time, cat5.tv slash dreamhost. For just $5 and a bit of change per month, you are going to get unlimited website hosting, unlimited email accounts on that hosting uh, service. You are also going to receive a free domain name. Ooh. So your own .com. Nice. To put that amazing website that you've been working on it's on true. there. If you run, if you want to build a WordPress site, fine. Sign up. Cat5.tv slash dreamhost. Just don't put Panama Papers on it. Just don't do it. But hey, uh, it's a great deal, folks. Best deal you're going to find. $5 and change per month. Go to cat5.tv slash dreamhost. I'm Sasha Dermatis, and here are the top stories for the week of November 9th, 2016. Tesco Bank's chief executive, Benny Higgins, said about 40,000 accounts saw suspicious transactions over the weekend, of which half had money taken. Tesco customers were still able to use their cards for cash withdrawals, chip and pin payments, and bill payments. However, the bank blocked customers from making online payments using their debit cards, although transfers between accounts and to other people were still allowed. 
On Monday, the bank confirmed some of the accounts have been subject to online criminal activity, in some cases resulting in money being withdrawn fraudulently. Mr. Higgins also apologized for the worry and inconvenience that the customers have faced. The bank has more than 7 million customer, customer accounts and 4,000 staff based in Edinburgh, Glasgow, and Newcastle. The one thing I have to say about this is why would you stop certain things and still allow transfers between accounts and to other people's accounts? Do you because think that they figured out what the vulnerability was or at least where the vulnerability lay? They, you know what? That's true. They must have because I was thinking, oh, well, those criminals could just transfer to their own accounts, but they must have been doing something else. Well, a good example would be if you encountered a company who's things kept exploding, you would no longer deal with that company, right? You would think that. You would think that. The company responsible for the infamous exploding Galaxy 7 Note is now recalling a whopping 2.8 million of its top-loading washing machines for, well, exploding. The decision to recall the products came after reports that 730 washer units had exploded, leading to nine injuries. Elliot Kay, chairman of the U.S. Product Safety Commission, said on Friday, we're talking about a very serious hazard of the top of the washing machines completely blowing off. The recall affects 34 different Samsung top-loading models sold from March 2011 to 2016. Samsung is offering consumers three options to help remedy the situation. The first, free in-home repair of the machine, which includes reinforcement of the washer's faulty top, along with a free one-year extension of the manufacturer's warranty. The company is also providing consumers with the option to receive rebate, a rebate applied toward the purchase of a new washing machine, whether it's a Samsung unit or not. This will include free installation of the new washer and removal of the old one. Wow. Finally, consumers can receive a full refund if they purchased their washing machine within the past 30 days of the recall announcement. 30 days? That Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, if you just bought our exploding washer, we'll replace it. But hey, hey you're if out not, of luck. I mean, if they, you're... they are giving you three options. That's. I want to know where yeah. option number four is. The bomb suit. <laughs> you just want to dress up like, and do your laundry. I want to. I want to get the bomb suit with the full like face shield thing and go in with my laundry and be like. As as that much would be awesome. as much as I really want Samsung to get it together and get the best. Like I don't want Samsung to be really affected by their exploding device, uh, devices because I like them as a company because they come up with some really cool things. I don't think anybody should go with uh, option number one, just getting your exploding washing machine temporarily fixed for an extra <laughs> one year warranty. We'll just, we'll just add a couple of screws here to hold it in when it explodes. And if it doesn't, yeah, yeah if it explodes 366 days from today, yeah. I'm sorry about your luck, buddy. But Sasha. they're repairing it though. But I've never been so thankful to have a 10-year-old Kenmore <laughs> as I am today. It may not be efficient, but it has never exploded on me. Do you, rem do you remember the Maytag commercials where the Maytag oh, yeah. guy was just sitting there all bored? I feel like they should do a new Maytag commercial. For, <laughs> but for <laughs> Samsung. <laughs> He's in a bomb suit, <laughs> for one thing. He's carrying a fire extinguisher. He's got an LG phone. <laughs> Definitely an LG phone. <laughs> <laughs> or even worse, a BlackBerry. <laughs> you know, what's, I, I kind of chuckled when this came out about the exploding washing machines because, like, here I have, now granted it's an S7 Edge, but I've got my Samsung phone. I've got two Samsung tablets at home. I have a Samsung washer. And Do dryer. you have insurance? That's the question. I have insurance through Samsung. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, so I hear that that's only good for 30 days. <laughs> okay, is this a case of just the fact that they have so many things that, of course, some of their things will malfunction? And do you think that's just... what it is? Or do you think that they're pushing innovation really, really fast? They're bringing out the best and coolest, like the, the, the exploding phone? Yeah, I really wanted that phone. I haven't really been like lusting after a new washing machine, but I really wanted that phone. Yeah, <laughs> See, I I think it comes down to companies are driven to make a better product cheaper. Oh yeah. So if 
they're looking for ways to cut costs, they're going to put an RFP out looking for somebody who's going to provide the cheapest possible parts. Mm -hmm. So you get a, a contract coming in that says, we will supply your batteries for your phones at 50 cents on the dollar compared to everybody else. You're like, well, this Ouch. is perfect. I'm going to save money. Next thing you know, you're delivering hand grenades. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm. it's the same deal with the washing machines. They're trying to save costs and they're getting these parts that are just infuriating. Yeah, the technical term is consumer horrorism. Yeah. It, we are driving this we because are, of w we're voting when we shop. Yeah, we it's are true. a consumer based society. We need that. I feel like, wasn't it after 9 11? They said, just go out and go shopping. That's yes, that stimulate was, stimulate yes. the economy. Right? So, yeah. so that's what they need. They need to keep triggering you, and they want you to buy a new phone, even though your phone is only two years old. They want you to yeah. buy a new washing machine because all of a sudden it will update your phone when you need new washer fluid. I don't know what happens, but <laughs> <laughs> do you think oh. a washing machine uses washer fluid? Oh, you know what I like. Are you a person that gets your headlight fluid topped up? Oh no, my I gosh. can't. What? You don't get your headlight fluid topped up. There's no, you better you don't better do, do that. This to me, Jeff. No. You better you, get, you better you change time, the grapple grommets if you haven't done that. Recalibrate it every once in a while. I'm not talking to Jeff Weston any longer. Yeah, that's we're moving on. <laughs> the Myth Ubuntu Linux OS that paired the Myth TV home theater PC software with an Ubuntu Linux base is being disbanded. The remaining Mythbuntu crew announced tonight it's been a long and fun ride from 7.10, but it's time to turn in our badge. Mythbuntu, as a separate distribution, will cease to exist. We will take the necessary steps to pull Mythbuntu specific packages from the repositories unless someone steps up to take these packages over. Myth TV packages in the official repositories and the Mythbuntu PPA will continue to be available and updated at their current rate. Mythbuntu is ending since there are only two developers left from 10 before, and the effort is too overwhelming for the resources left. Those wanting Myth TV on Ubuntu can at least continue installing the Myth TV Ubuntu Debian packages atop a vanilla installation. Sad news anytime anything that's Linux is yeah, for sure. disbanded. I mean, it's when you go from 10 people down to two people, I understand it's overwhelming. Um, and, and people got to realize that a lot of these groups are volunteers, just like Category just like 5 us. TV mm -hmm. are volunteers. We're doing really, really well in Season 10. We've got a great crew. We've got you two that are here, you know, most we of the time. We have you two? <laughs> Bring it up yeah. on them. <laughs> <laughs> the two of you. Oh, <laughs> Extreme oh. letdown. <laughs> it's just oh, us. <laughs> Jeff, that was a pun. You just got us banned in mainland China. They've just blocked us in the firewall. Oh, what the heck was my point? <laughs> that we are we are amazing. volunteers. Yes, and, and season ten's awesome. And we've had times where we've gone through you know the the valleys where there aren't a lot of volunteers, and I had to carry a lot of the show, and it got hard, it got difficult, and thankfully I pressed on, and here we are in season ten, and uh, and I can see that it would be really really tough to keep carrying these projects when people that are helping have dropped off and are not being replaced with new people. Let's be clear, I though. Do. You still carry us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Robbie does, <laughs> ca Robbie you, does carry us. Yeah. Still be, yeah, Just before the show, be I'm the guy who was wiring the Ethernet into your netbook. I'm like, Jeff, you could have done this. <laughs> I, I could have. You could have done this. I wasn't thinking. Yeah, well, yeah. So I was running the cables and setting up the cameras and everything else. Um, My, but, but you did so pro. <laughs> I was very impressed. It's a really good Ethernet cabling job. That's right. My heart does break for these two that are left because sure. I know how much, like, for it's example, a labor of this, love. This, this show, everybody who's here loves being here. Yeah. Right? And so you don't want to give something like that up. We're not giving this up, by the way. But you don't want to give something like that up. So those two people that are, that were left, that have to obviously just say goodbye due to the fact that it's overwhelmingly difficult to do something like that mm -hmm. they're not going away happy about this they're no doubt. sad and no so doubt. are we but here's one of the things about the open source community that i love if you're in a project that comes to an end for whatever reason 
you could pick up a new one. Mm -hmm. You can start sure. a new one. Uh, if you find that niche, like mm -hmm. there right. has to be that niche. Mythbuntu is a niche. Absolutely it was. But things are in the tech world are changing so fast. I mean, you look at our show from a year ago, and already you could see an advancement in technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, imagine, in a, you know, so they take a break for a couple of months, whatever, regroup and go, what's the latest and greatest thing we can come up with now? It wouldn't surprise me if they're back yeah, we'll on see track. Talented, talented bunch of guys. Exactly. Uh, or gals. I mean, who knows? Uh, but he, here's the thing that you know. I I think that you know that it was a great project. It's sad to see it cut off, and and the fact that there are only two left. That's that's kind of the the nail in the coffin right there, because p other people haven't stepped up. And I guess the call to action is maybe you could step up maybe there are viewers out there that can help out with these kinds of you know look for projects that are dwindling because they don't have enough support from the community or from people that are able to help develop um, next week we're going to be looking at NEMS uh, Nagios Enterprise Management Server and you know that is for Raspberry Pi because uh, Nagios Pi fell off because Ryan was unable to really keep up with the demand and uh, and so NEMS was developed and so, you know, maybe there are projects that you can pick up. Maybe somebody wants to pick up um, Myth. But f the question that I have is, is how many people are using it still? Mm -hmm. well, are there people true. in the community? Are there people who are watching this show who use Myth TV uh, extensively and that are actually affected by this decision to shut it down? That's, that's a curiosity that I have. I'm, I'm curious how, you know, how many users are out there that are actually being affected by the shutdown of Myth Boon 2? Mm -hmm. Good point. Mm -hmm. Nintendo's NES Classic is, at its core, a Nintendo-approved NES emulator that comes with 30 ROMs. It feels very similar to the sort of thing people have been building for ages by running Linux on a Raspberry Pi, with the main difference from a conceptual standpoint being that the NES Classic is considerably less legally questionable. It turns out that the difference is pretty much end there. If you take apart an NES Classic, like GameSpot's Peter Brown did, you'll see that NES builds its retro pot or its retro em emulators like <laughs> you want to say retro pot. You actually pie. want to say retro pot. I, I want to say it so bad. <laughs> emulators a whole lot like the rest of us do. Inside the NES Classic is a quad core Linux computer with 256 megabytes of RAM and 512 megabytes of flash memory for storage. In other words, it runs off a standard off the shelf circuit board with some custom software. It seems that the best way to build an emulator, whether you're messing around with a development board or a multi billion dollar console producer, is just drop a bunch of ROMs into a custom version of Linux. And while the specs may seem low when compared to today's modern co consoles and computers, it still provides more than enough power for emulating the finest 30 games the 1980s had to offer. <laughs> Those hoping to crack apart the NES Classic and take advantage of its open software to add more games are out of luck, as the flash memory is soldiered to the mo motherboard. So you're looking. So if you're looking to play more than Nintendo's 30 chosen games, RetroPie might still be a better option, which you can get at our store, which is cat5.tv/pie. Is that right? Yeah, but, go for it, folks. Yeah, but while the NES Classic may be lacking in custom customizability, <laughs> it does have one major advantage over a Raspberry Pi. Style. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. So, it does, yeah, it does look So cute. cute. I would super. love to be able to do a case mod that looks that good. It's super cute. But, what I want to know is, does that little hatch at the front open up and do you have to go... <laughs> and blow, do, you blow on the, do you have to blow on the ROM chips? <laughs> I have the retro pie. I have the retro pie, and yeah. I honestly say that we, like Dave and I, have so much fun with it, and we like invite the neighbors in to see it. Like we just like we love it a lot. Cool. And I can't imagine being now constrained to just thirty games, right? Like now I'm like thirty games. I don't know. Retro yeah. pie has like. 3,000 games. I don't know how many games, but like a lot of games. <laughs> 30,000 rounds. That was oh, awesome. Boy. See, oh, I need to get another pie because 
what I was using my RetroPie for, I now have my Plex server on. Oh, oh so get another one, buddy. I, I Cat5.tv slash pie, best place to get them. I know. I do have to. I should, Jen the other day asked me what I want for Christmas, so I should just tell her I want another pie. But get a <laughs> bunch gonna of them. She's going to wrap up an actual pie. Yeah. She yeah. will. That's right. I, I will <laughs> and get then, a box with a raspberry pie, and they'll be like, where would I plug in the controller? Don't correct her now. Because the best thing to have happen is that she actually gives you a raspberry pie that you can eat. But you tell her in that moment, I actually meant a raspberry pie microcomputer. So then that way the guilt sets in. And as you are eating the raspberry pie, she's on cat5.tv slash pie ordering for you a raspberry pie kit. See, this is a fl- uh, I best this, of both no, worlds. This, this is, you is know what? Complete- online, online petitions work best. Remember, everybody, when I said like two years ago, Dave. I want a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that? And I have a laptop. <laughs> yeah. It's on the set tonight. Yeah. What, what you just mentioned there about the pie is a flashback to when Jen and I were dating. Oh? So this is... Okay. This is the manipulation that you used? <laughs> no, this is going to be the one... <laughs> this is going to be one of those <laughs> face palm moments where you're like, really? So our relationship was getting serious and she talked about getting a ring. Mm. So I went out being the smart butt that I am and I purchased the horror movie The Ring (laughs) but I also I removed the DVD and placed the ring inside the box oh nice so I wrapped it up and so for Valentine's (sighs) Day I gave her The Ring and she's like that's how he proposed folks uh, no it wasn't a pr- it was it was a promise ring but still she's like okay. what is this <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's like it wasn't even the real thing oh do you know the promise <laughs> the- oh jen i am so sorry <laughs> I may have had a few screws loose, but we had his. Oh my gosh, he's like, he's like, okay, hun, open it. Well, and she's like, oh. he's like, oh no, dude, dude, it's not the real ring. It's just, it's not the movie. It's not a, it's not a wedding ring or a proposal ring. It's, it's not an engagement ring. It's just. It's just a promise. I promise that I, <laughs> I will promise. one day buy oh, you a ring. I promise that at one point I'll get smarter and I will actually propose no, no, to oh, you. No, no, no. Yes. We talked about the promise ring. We knew it was all good. So the okay, prom- it was, this was worked out <laughs> yeah, in it advance. Was, she was expecting it, just not the horror movie. <laughs> right. So when she opens it up and gets this horror movie, she's like, what is this? I'm like, you said you wanted the ring. She's like, a ring. Oh, oh shoot. Oh, right. So she puts it down and you hear the ring inside kind of move around. I'm like, Oh no! I think the DVD's broken, and then she opens up and saw the ring, and the world was saved, and you know all the kind of good, fun, loving stuff. But yeah, so there's my deck. Such a romantic. So I, I okay, I, folks. I, you talk okay, about I, the Raspberry Pi, I, and I'm just picturing yeah. her doing this as revenge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I like fully, 100 percent support you, Jen. Please. Just buy him a pie. Um, And later on, not today, I want to hear the actual engagement story because... Oh, the engagement story is way better. Yeah, Yeah, I think it's important that we also note before we move on, Sasha, that Category 5 does not necessarily endorse any of the ideas that have been expressed here today. (laughs) So, gentlemen, if you are thinking of ways to, you know, advance that relationship, I'm thinking, you know, maybe we need to hear from the wife. Yeah. Just maybe don't. I will say, just because I am fairly recently engaged in that, actually, it's been a long time since I've gotten engaged, but I'm not yet married. Um, (laughs) Kind of complicated. (laughs) That's a whole other story. That's a whole other story. But um, Dave bought the ring three months before he proposed. And it was the worst three months of my life because I thought he was breaking up with me because he didn't want to ruin the surprise. So he couldn't get too excited near me. So usually, like, he's so emotive, usually, but he was like all of a sudden like the quietest like he was just like a statue of a man every time i talked to him <laughs> he's just sitting there all trying. the time going <laughs> <laughs> see i was the opposite when i bought the, the her engagement ring uh, i realized we're completely off and left field i feel like yeah squirrel. what was the story but, about but when oh, i yeah. bought the engagement ring Ra- i couldn't contain myself pie. 
I contacted her dad that day to say, hey, let's go out for breakfast tomorrow. Went out for breakfast, and that, I, I believe it was that night I proposed, because I was like, I've got the ring, i got to do it. That's mm. the way to do mm. it, or mm-hmm. else it's mm-hmm. bad energy. Okay. Okay, I but just so you know, along. we digress <laughs> from Nintendo to Raspberry Pi, to <laughs> horror movies, to wedding rings, to long engagements. <laughs> yes. And here I, we are, I back am, at the news. I am getting married September 6th. 9th, 2017. Um, so I will be missing two shows. Okay. Okay. Thank I you suppose for the that's. Notice. Yeah, we yeah. appreciate the advance notice. Okay. <laughs> While Ubuntu Phone continues to stew, bereft of new devices and with little develop- developer interest, other efforts to create a fully fledged Linux smartphone or phone are picking up pace. Chief among them is KDE Plasma Mobile. KDE itself needs a little introduction. It's one of the most popular Linux desktop environments around and recently celebrated its 20th birthday. Plasma is the name of its graphical user interface, GUI, and you'll probably know it best in its desktop guise. But KDE Community has its sights set beyond the desktop. It has ambitions to run a much broader set of devices, including tablets and, more interestingly, smartphones. The aim is to create a truly customizable UI built with modularity from the ground up. Plasma Mobile also touts a heavy emphasis on user privacy. Plasma Mobile aims to be a hackable, flashable ROM for existing popular Android device or Android phones. It can also dual boot with Android and is able to run on both ARM and Intel-based devices. Plasma Mobile currently supports the Nexus 5 and the OnePlus One, as well as Intel-based devices. You'll need to be prepared for many limitations as Plasma Mobile is under development and not aimed for end users. But the device can do the essentials of a dumb phone like make calls, send texts, snap photos, and a small set of apps are available. For more information, head over to the Plasma Mobile website, which is plasma slash mobile dot org. I feel like that's Plasma all- dash. Oh, sorry. Mobile. Plasma dash mobile dot org. <laughs> I think that I could actually use something like that. I need a dumbed down phone so I do less Simplify things. my life. Please. Thank you for watching the Category 5.TV newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And for more free content, if content be sure to check out our website. From the Category 5.TV newsroom, I'm Sasha Dermatis. Thanks, Sasha. This is Category 5 Technology TV. It's episode number 477. We are creeping up on that number 500. Oh, my wait. goodness. Have we figured out the day? Do we know? Like Somebody do the math. Somebody do the math. Sometime next year. Yeah, sometime in the early year. Uh, this is uh, the show. I'm Robbie. I'm Jeff Weston. Over there. I'm Sasha Dermatis. Hey, Sash. Uh, and uh, tonight we're just having fun looking at 360 video. We've created video with our 360 camera rig, and we've converted the files ready to do stitching. You ready for this? Absolutely. So the next step is to take those two camera lenses, which provide two 4K videos, so 8K total video, and actually convert it to a single spherical video, which, of course, you can't save as a file in spherical, so it creates an equirectangular, which we're going to see uh, what that looks like. So back at my computer here, we're going to actually bring up the second tool. Let's push that again. There we go. I'm going to bring up that second tool called PixPro 360 Stitch because we've already prepared our files, so we're ready to go. Uh, All we need to do is open that up. Again, this software is available from Kodak. It's Kodak Pix pro.com just as it shows on your screen there p-i-x-p-r-o so with this software we're going to stitch it all together go file open files and you'll see that there is a and b so camera a is going to be our front camera ideally i like it that way uh let's see i want to go to my desktop and 360 video 475 that's where i saved it i can't use this first watch what happens if i try to open it unable to recognize files the selected video photo is in 
invalid or damaged. Do you notice that? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. remember, that's why we had to convert it. So we created this converted folder and used the other tool to do that. And it says information 2448 by 2448, 30 frames a second, round EIS off, and it is ready to go. All we need is the other side of the camera. So we browse for the second file, and there we go. Both files are valid to stitch. Please press OK button to start edit. Thank you for being so polite, Kodak. You've always been there for me. All right, so if I scroll through the video, that is now what it looks like thus far. You'll see that our stitching is very weird because mm -hmm. we have not yet set it up. That's the line where the two cameras meet. All right, so we've got to actually fix that and stitch it up. Let's see what we need to do. First things first, what I want to do is over on the left-hand side here, there's this handy little button called Audio Sync, and that's where a clapboard or something like that comes in. What this is going to do is it's actually scanning the audio on my two video files, and it's lining them up so that they remember how we talked on episode 475, well, what happens if we don't push record at exactly the same millisecond? Right. Then we're going to have the rear of the camera is going to be offset from the front of the camera so as people look around they're going to be seeing things in the wrong timing so audio sync helps us with that and uh, it's going to correct the um, the timing between the two camera lenses so is it reading the or er, like listening to the it audio is. files it's looking at the then... wavetable okay yeah and it's figuring out this is where as i say a clapboard comes in handy because that's that one boom right. and so it all immediately says oh there's a spike boom line that up Okay. Nice and quick. You'll see that this is taking a little bit longer because it doesn't have any of those spikes. It's just me and Sasha talking. So it's trying to figure out, based on our talking, where do I line these two clips up? Now, what would happen if one of your microphones was turned off? Like, I, I don't know, maybe they sure. don't have the ability to turn the microphone off, but one doesn't you have do. audio. Yeah, you do actually have that capability. Um, if that happened, then you would be doing the lineup manually. Okay. You'd have to. Um, set it up and line them up yourself. Uh, in a case like that, w usually what I would do is I would pull the circular spherical video into a, s a traditional editor like CyberLink PowerDirector mm -hmm. or um, perhaps you know um, any any nonlinear video editor would work. And I would line them up that way and figure out kind of where I need to right. place them okay. and and work it that way. So this is going to take a little bit of time to. Um, to find the audio in this clip. I'm going to give it a, a split second here, but I may actually just abort and, and we're just going to move along because we, we, we're going to pretend that we did that, okay? Is that okay? But I mean, this is just a five-minute video, so I can only imagine how long it took with the uh, season 10 kickoff. <laughs> like, <laughs> you don't want to know. Sasha, you remember. I was still it, working on that a month later. It was definitely a month. Like, it it was took a month. Insane. Literally. Yeah, because I mean, I have tiny little things that I ask Robbie to do, like just in general, like and I'm my like, laptop yeah, it's is 5 broken. A.m. I'm still working <laughs> on the the video from six weeks ago. Exactly, <laughs> it worked, uh, and it came came out fairly well. So okay, so let's pretend that we've waited for the audio sync because that could okay. take some time, uh, and we're just going to skip over that tonight. But let's pretend that it's been done. So now we're going to now proceed with what's called stitching. So this is where we see that the two cameras do not line up. Like, how is it that there's me, and then there's the roof, the ceiling? Well, that's, as you were saying, Jeff, the two cameras are not quite, they're not correct, lined yeah. up, right? So we need to actually correct that digitally. So we're going to bring up the camera with calibration here, and we can roll that camera. Watch what happens here. See how I'm rolling part of the camera? Uh. And I can line it up. So you can see that behind me there. Whoop. Slow it down. Slow it down, man. So I want to line those cameras up as best as I can. Okay. Now, while that's open, I can move around here. It's really, really awkward in this kind of view. Here we go. Uh, right. Okay, there we go. So you can kind of see where the, where the roll puts you. See how you can do that? Okay. So one of the things here is that I've got... 220 degrees not 180 so the overlap is a little bit strange so I want to kind of bring in the distance a little bit see how I can move the distance uh, all right. to fix that and we're gonna just kind of tweak those settings until we find that you know 
happy spot where everything is lined up as well as possible. And you're going to spend a lot more time than we're spending on this tonight uh, because this is just for the sake of an example, but um, you're going to take some time. When I was stitching together our episode 471, I spent probably about an hour just making sure that everything was lined up just right. And and even then, still had some spots, as people noted, um, where things were not quite in the right spot. But that's okay. I figured you would forgive that. Now I'm going to do that subtle movement. See how I'm lining up the lines of the ceiling? doesn't have to be perfect for our demonstration, but you can see the concepts behind what I'm doing. Now, do you pick one specific spot to line it up? You know, ideally, you ideally, if you were to set this up, now I was just holding this in my hand, but if you were to set this up and perhaps walk around it a couple of times and, and set up a bit of a calibration shot so that you can use that as your, your lines and things like that, using a, 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 probably a straight edge or something would, would help. Right. But we just were... I was holding it in my hands. So you can see that I'm well off right there. Finding that spot. Okay, so what I'm looking at here, do you see the chairs, the burgundy chairs there, Jeff? Yes. I can see that there's one here. This is the last chair, yep. and this is the last chair. Right. So I can see that, okay, if I bring that in... Let's first see how distant we are over here. Uh, we don't notice we don't have that distance over here. It actually looks pretty good over on this side. Okay. See that? So what that tells me is that the cameras were not exactly uh, straight this okay. way. There's a little bit of a deviation tilted one direction okay. okay so that's where it really can be tricky because you can see okay well it actually looks really really good on this side there's the monitor and you know it gets wonky down around the camera and then over here there's a much greater distance between where the chair should be and where it is so this is where we're going to use the pan which is going to fix that end of it so it's going to tilt the camera kind of that way and then bring it in a little bit closer and then roll that and it's tough to get it perfect that's for sure you're gonna do a lot of tinkering but you can see that we're getting a little bit closer there okay there we are see so there's a bit of a ghosting line there because my, my alignment is just ever so slightly off. And so you've got to look at, okay, so that looks like the pan to me is still off. Maybe the tilt needs to come down like that. See that? I'm looking at the computer oh, okay. as well as the chair and saying, okay, the camera is just off like that. There we go. And now bring in the distance a little bit. Now, does it only affect the like your movements? Does it only affect the screen you're on, or does it move everything behind as well? Yeah, well, it's only moving the the seam between the two. Oh, okay. So you can see it actually looks really quite good over here, except I can see a line up in the roof. Right. But generally, and maybe that's because it falls on the monitor there, it looks pretty good over here. This obviously is perfect because it's the one lens. You're just saying you're perfect on the screen. No. Well, <laughs> and then this is looking fairly good except my lines up there are off, my lines down here are off. Right. So you can see that there's going to be a, 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 an unimaginable amount of just tweaking, but you can see how the you're able to turn the two camera lenses digitally, you're able to tilt them this way, you're able to turn them this way and pan and tilt and move them around and, and move the distance in and out right. until you finally get that perfect um, that perfect view and it's going to take some time and it's more time than we can really like I'm not going to get a perfect seamless stitch tonight right here on the show but at least I'm showing you the techniques that you're going to use in order to create this video but you can see how our video, we can we can look around the the studio right here with a handheld view of these two cameras butted together, 
and we can render that out. So I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to pretend that that's perfect so that for this episode, anyways, 477, you're going to have a, an, a copy of this video that you can see up until now, and we're going to tweak it over the next little while, and we're going to actually get it into editing and do that kind of stuff. Right. But for the sake of tonight... Okay, so final kind of step in this program. Let's pretend that we've got the calibration absolutely perfect. I'm going to click on export. And that's going to ask me, hey, well, where do you want to put it? I'm going to throw it into uh, the same, I'm going to throw it in the same folder, but give it a different file name. Uh, we'll call this our 477 stitch. Okay, and then what do we want to do? We want full 4K, so 3840 by 1920. Notice the strange resolution. It's 2 over 1, not 16 over 9. Uh, do we want the audio? Yes. Do we want to upload to YouTube? No. So we're going to say OK, and that is now going to actually render. Oh, you know what? I missed one step, Jeff. Uh-oh. You ready for it? Yes. We're going to stop that, and I'm just going to pan through here. One of the things I forgot about this software, and it is important to note this, is that where you position the camera is where it's going to create the center view. So when someone loads it up on YouTube, that's the first thing that they see. Oh, okay. okay. So I want to actually hard set that by moving my camera. Notice I've fast forwarded through the video because at the beginning of the video, it was just a video of my hand and right. I was moving it around quite a bit. So scroll into where we're actually talking and doing the show. And then I'm going to position this camera approximately there. Okay. Oh, okay. So now I'm going to start exporting. Same thing. 477 stitch and audio yes not upload to YouTube and okay so now notice it goes back to my hand because it's starting at the beginning and you can see the two spherical videos there queued up on the left and their uh, playback is happening as well at the same time so this is happening in less than real time it's 30 frames a second and we're probably moving at about 10 frames a second from what I can tell uh, so it's going to take, you know, if it's five minutes, it's going to take, you know, easily four, five, maybe six or seven times that right. in order to render this out. So we're at 1%. It's going to take some time. But when it's done, we have what's called an equa rectangular video. And that video is a very strange format. I'm going to show you what it looks like because I, uh, I can do that by simply stopping this production, which I'm going to pick up a, again in a few minutes time after the show. But this is what the actual video is going to look like. Oh, okay. All right. So it's crazy to look at when you don't have the proper viewer. You can't really watch that on a TV. Correct. It's, it's really messed up, um, but it's going to be viewable once you play it on something like YouTube or right. through your viewer. So I'm going to just kind of tweak that stitching after the show tonight. I'm going to render it out, and I'm going to put it on YouTube. So click here. And you can see that, and uh, you'll be able to see what it looks like, at least at this point in the, in the game. And then we're going to take it from, from there uh, on our, during our series. That is super cool. 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 I like that. Thanks. It's a lot of fun. It was so much fun working with 360 video. I can a imagine. Of, a lot of post-production work, though, folks, so be ready for it. It is a fair bit more work. I can't wait to see what kind of unique <clears throat> things we could do with the show with that. You know, it, it, you could do so much with it. Absolutely. But you can't, you can't use this kind of camera and a 360 camera realistically and intermix them. That's true. It has to all be shot on 360. See, as we were looking at that video, one of the, what was rolling through my head is, could you imagine having a wedding video where, mm. like, you know, say you hang it, the, the, the cameras from... You know the ceiling of whatever yeah. room you're in. Film the wedding that way. The dance, even. Oh yeah, that'd be so cool. That'd be so and then neat. afterwards, you've got the bride. Oh, you'd be able to look it around. Be even everywhere. better if that 360 video was on top of like a little robot that was just falling. Oh, Sasha. The whole time. It's just messing with us. See, Sasha, here I'm trying to give you ideas for your wedding in a year, <laughs> <laughs> and you're thinking about robots. Robots. Hey, have no, we got time you. for a couple of viewer comments and questions? Yes. Can we just like push out a sure. couple of these? Where do you want to start? <clears throat> Let's start at the top. Frank, your pal Frank, Brittany Marie says, I was late getting to watch last week's show. This is episode number 476. Mm -hmm. uh, I just got to it this morning. What great information. I get that a lot. 
<laughs> I'd seen the show earlier in the spring about mobile malware, and I thought, hey, it's a really important topic. Uh, I'm tempted to see if I can show this week's episode at work. Wow. Would I have permission to do that? I work for a federal, federal agency in the U.S. We have about 50-ish employees at our site. Uh, people could really benefit from this information, both on a personal and professional level. As always, thanks for the show. Always informative. That comes to us from Frank, your pal, Brittany. Brittany Marie, thank you very much for the comment questions. And, um, yeah, you've got our permission. We are licensed under the Creative Commons uh, share alike attribution. Our license just changed. I haven't I, memorized it yet. Look I down. Feel I yeah. feel like Frank slash Brittany has more friends and a longer name than it used to be just like Frank slash Brittany. And now it's Frank slash your pal, Frank slash Brittany Marie. Where's it going to end, Frank? It, every week it gets longer. <laughs> I'm excited. This is very royal of you. <laughs> but see, I, th I think this is awesome. I mean, the, the fact that, I mean, this is what we do with the show. Uh, we we bring information forward, we try and enlighten your world in these types of topics. And to hear something like this where it's, hey, this is amazing, I love it, I've benefited from it, I would like to show this at work so that my coworkers, mm -hmm. like, that's why we're here. I would not only uh, allow that, but also encourage it. I mean, Absolutely. sit down with the projector. But I think the one thing that I would really like is, hey, if you're going to have 50 people sitting in a room watching our show, please, 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 please just take a picture and send it to us. Oh, I, would, yeah. I would love to tweet that. And I would love to print it and put it up on our wall here in the studio because that's a lot of fun sitting around watching Category 5. And if you want, see if President-elect Trump will join you. That would be awesome. Moving on to Gavin. <laughs> Gavin is the best. The best one. That's the best. That's just their name. Yes. Uh, Gavin got a hold of our tutorial on how to fly a nano quadcopter uh, on YouTube. Gavin says, thank you so much. You answered all my questions. And you taught me exactly what I wanted to know. You are great. <laughs> Gavin the best is the best. That is an amazing I love it. I can't oh, I can't make this stuff up, folks. <laughs> well, you totally could make this I up. I could make this up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and this email comes to us from uh, Jones. <laughs> Dr. Helen Jones. Robbie, you are a sex machine. <laughs> I was not expecting that one. <laughs> All right. Oh. What did Dana uh, or Dana say? Uh, Dana. This said, is after watching our uh, Linux screen oh, command tutorial. I poked myself with my poppy. <laughs> oh, that hurt. Okay. So Dana Ludwig said this was uh, caught on the tutorial, caught our tutorial about how to use the Linux screen command and said this is the best explanation of screen that I've ever heard or read. Right up there with Helen's comment. Yeah. Thank you, Dana. And, okay, so I want to take care of the next one. Okay. <laughs> Just because I feel like it needs the voice. The voice. The voice. All right. Okay. <clears throat> I'm a retired 60-plus year old single white male. Where are we going with this, Jeff? <laughs> Okay, so no, C28D uh, watched the newsroom from two weeks ago and commented about the ad tracking. But Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yes, yes. But it's just the way that C128D uh, wrote it. It's great. It's, I'm a retired 60-plus-year-old single white male from the USA. I have no use for jerry curl, rollerblades, or feminine hygiene projects, Pro <laughs> products, anything that's fairly inobtrusive, non-invasive, doesn't risk my security, and allows companies to target relevant ads to me is, fairly, is a fairly good thing in my book. I think so. But just the way that it started, I was like, oh yeah, you gotta put like the music here, that like hazy view bum, of somebody bum, bum, walking down the beach. Yeah. You know? I enjoy <laughs> strolls on the beach and is, puppy dogs. Yeah. I enjoy talking It is awesome. It. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks, C128. <laughs> D, uh, yeah, we're talking, uh, talking about ad tracking and the yes. fact that, you know, the ad services that various companies use, including Category 5 TV, you go to our website, and I hope that the ads are relevant and targeted to you, because that's part of the idea. It's meant to 
present you with advertising that, hey, this is actually really a good product Absolutely. that I want to buy. And by clicking on that ad, you're actually supporting Category 5 TV. So relevant advertising is, is a really good thing from both an advertiser perspective, um, where we provide a venue for advertisers, and for yourself because you're finding relevant things. Where it falls short is that it usually it, it it's not it's anonymous. So it, it, you're you're basically your your trends and what you enjoy is being tracked usually by a, an anonymous IP address. Right. So if you live in a house where you know three different families share the internet, uh, I happen to know somebody who um, was uh, renting a, a basement apartment and sharing the internet with the people upstairs, and the people upstairs were surfing for <clears throat> some things that they may find questionable downstairs. Oh. Oh, and so yes. the ads that they were seeing were not quite relevant to their that's desires. What's happening. Hmm. Yeah, and so that's kind of what <laughs> happens when when you start seeing these weird ads and it happens in the workplace where you know it's by IP address. So if Joe on his lunch break is looking for a you know a jigsaw and but you, you're totally not interested in that, you might start seeing advertisements for jigsaws mm -hmm. because right. they're they've been googling for it or checking out Amazon. That's hmm. smart on Simple them, that. but yeah. Yeah, it's neat stuff. Yeah. I like Can it. Can I do the next one? Please. Okay, John Ratcliffe commented, first time I've happened across this channel, excellent presentation, why so few subscribers? So... Hmm, what's up with that? Well, the next one, Aaron Apostolus, OFG, <laughs> you oh. earned a new subscriber i earned a new f subscriber this is this, this is they found the video where you and i sasha taught about how to move a linux home folder and yes. they were pretty excited about that we got a new subscriber so john ratcliffe that's how it's done um sometimes a video that is three years old happens to turn to a new subscriber in aaron apostolus apostolus and so you know it takes time and a lot of companies, a lot of shows on on Facebook, uh, YouTube, Twitter, buy followers to make it look like yeah. we've we, got millions we of don't viewers. Buy followers. We don't do that, and and it's. Although my followership is for sale if you want to give me some money. <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 <laughs> I will like your YouTube channel for one billion dollars. That amount of money. Exactly. No, but it's true. It will be allowed to be followed. It's a true story. It, is, it sucks that that actually happens because then it's not a true representation and it's everybody absolutely right. is looking at this as though it is. Not everybody. But and it's those, a sad case yeah, because it drives people like us, not us, but people like us that are doing what we do. Uh, to to give in to it and say, okay, well, if I want subscribers, I'm going to have to pay for it, and they're not going to be real people. Mm -hmm. So our viewers uh, are real people, and I appreciate that our viewers are real people. Mm -hmm. And so it takes us more time to gain those viewers and that momentum because we're not paying for an instant 20,000 subscribers. It's not happening. So, I, so I we're happy with what we got. I love the authentic nature of the show. I do, because too. Because of that. That is really important to me and why I'm so proud to be a part of it. So, yeah. thank so you, Robbie. I do hope, John, that you will follow suit with Aaron and subscribe to the show. Share this like uh, Frank in front of 50 people at work and say, hey, folks, here's their channel. Please subscribe if you're interested in it. Because we want real subscribers. We don't want phony paid subscribers that are liking videos and, and things like that because they're paid to do so. No, we want, we want to actually get videos out there that matter. And we, and we want to have you subscribe because you like what we're doing. That's right. So please do. And, and I think, uh, Sasha, you made a good point before the show where maybe a lot of people, or maybe it was you, Jeff, I don't know, I overheard a discussion anyways between the two of you. It was maybe evil. a lot of people just watch the show. A lot of people just right. watch the show. Mm -hmm. They don't sign up for a YouTube account and click on the subscribe button. We appreciate those who do take the time to do that because it does increase our numbers and advertisers look at that and that values what we do in such a way that it monetizes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, please consider doing that if you haven't already. But there it is. Uh, yeah. Snorri Gileff... Why did I give myself this one? <laughs> Sorry, Snorri. Snorri Gleifson commented. Gylefson. Gylefson. One of us is right. G Gylefson? We will battle to the death. Uh, says, I am running Ubuntu Mate on this computer and it is a great distro. Remember that old video where... S oh, no, that was it. 
I started carrying on with the next one. Uh, Snorri <laughs> said, run an Ubuntu Mate. The, the reason that it came up, I think, Sasha, is because you switched your laptop to Ubuntu Mate. How and are you I finding love it? it? I love it. I love it, except that the first time I ran it, because I was, I, what was I on? Zorin before? You were on Zorin and OS. Zorin, version 8. This is the funniest thing, because I was doing everything as I wanted to do, and I could navigate perfectly until yeah. it ter- came to turning off my laptop. No way. And then I couldn't find the power. <laughs> the turn off Yeah, button. the turn offiness oh, of goodness. it. Because you found it? Because it used to be in the bottom left-hand corner, and now right. it's in the top right-hand corner, and you'd think that I would look everywhere. No, I just looked in the bottom left-hand corner and panicked. She just panicked and threw her laptop. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> and then I looked like, maybe it's above. So I looked like right. top left, and it wasn't there, and I went through everything. Thing, and I was like, oh. Let's look at Leedy at Williams's comment here because uh, it actually involves your laptop as well. Leedy at Williams, Jeff, do you want to take it? They viewed last week's show and said. Yes. Uh, great episode. That part yeah, where you. your wife ran into an ad and all of a sudden she has a root kit on her phone's home, home screen was interesting because I've seen stories of things like this happening, but most phones can only be rooted if the bootloader is unlocked mm. and you flash a root zip file with a custom recovery. But apparently she was telling the truth. Yeah, that's what we learned last week. That's right. So, uh, it says, I know that there are APKs uh, that you can install that root um, most phones without needing the bootloader on But it makes me wonder, will this evolve in a good way so that people who want to root their phones will be able to do so without needing a custom recovery installed? Interesting. Mm. And at the same time, scary. Sure. Now, Sasha is running uh, Ubuntu Mate. Did you change the way Mate looked for her or left it in its default look with the panel at the top and bottom. Funny story. Okay. Uh, Sasha, you know, there was an emergency crisis the morning that I fixed, that I finished setting up Sasha's laptop. So I had scheduled two hour, a two-hour window, because this is how I roll, folks. My schedule is such that it's like I am up at 5.30 in the morning and working on Sasha's laptop. And, you know, hopefully I will have it done by 7 o'clock. Um, so the window was, you know, working on it the one night before and then spending two hours the following morning. But the following morning was like an emergency situation. Didn't I set off alarms or something? And, <laughs> oh, right. And it, it, yeah. Yeah, they... They called me up because they knew that I was helpful with computers and that I was willing to help out where I can. And so I went there to do something to their server and and I set off their alarm and it was a mess. But anyways, I didn't quite get all the things done on Sasha's laptop that I had hoped to that day. Is that because you got arrested for break and enter? I actually did not get arrested, thankfully, (laughs) because... But I was... I was yeah I was I was wearing my black hoodie cuz it was a cold oh, a cold morning and I realized as I'm standing there how this must look to the passerbys. Um but uh so I left it there all gift wrapped and it with a bow on it on your desk and uh it was literally just out of the box Ubuntu Mate. I restored your backup but I did nothing else. I did install Chromium so that you'd have a fail safe in case Firefox wasn't working for you. Um, so that was it, and then it was that was it. <laughs> so, and you found your way. So Ubuntu Mate with all the bare like the bare essentials and top menu bar, the power button by the way top right. Sorry, forgot to mention that. Yep, top top right. That's where it is. Sorry, you can continue with Lidiot's. Uh, well, I mean, basically, that's just what it was. But mm. I think the last comment is absolutely crucial and critical oh? for validation for me. Oh, what did what did they do? Great episode and great talk during the news. Aww. Can we just have like a sappy moment? Just a sappy. What? See, we were talking about this before the show started. I said to Sasha, I'm good at debating anything. Give me one word and I could debate that word. That's the problem. See, we just we just can't argue because we're like, oh, yeah, you're right, okay, Sasha. Yeah, I just... That's also a great idea. <laughs> yeah, but see, I just can't agree with you when you want to replace your grandma with a robot kitchen. We are not. <laughs> we are not going back there. Honoring my grandmother. <laughs> It's a darn good lasagna. (laughs) 
Okay, a couple folks were looking at our video about how to export <laughs> password box passwords. First of all, John Derek Benito says, thanks for this. It's a shame password box became commercialized. Like what you guys said, they're so darn good that they got acquired by Intel. Mm. I've switched to LastPass, so I followed my very own directions on exporting the uh, the passwords from Password Box, and then I imported them into LastPass. And it's basically like having Password Box, but it's got a different name, and it's red. Oh, Ostap Lernotovich says, "Thank you so much." As of November eighth, this. Still referring to the password box, ex box export. Uh, this works. So that was uh, yesterday posted that. So right. thank you very much, Ostap. And I think that that covers our show for tonight because we're right out of time. Uh, yeah. But thanks, everybody, for sending in your comments, questions, your thoughts. Uh, next week, we are going to have a Raspberry Pi 3 here on the set with us. We are going to set it up with Nagios Enterprise Monitoring Server. And that's going to allow us to connect to a network and then monitor the resources on various computers throughout that network. So if a server crashes or is acting a little wonky or has very little memory left, or maybe the backup hard drive is full, we want to know those things, but we may not have the IT resources to go around to each computer and find out what's going on. So Nagios Enterprise Monitoring Server on a Raspberry Pi 3 is a little itty bitty box that we can plug into our corporate network and it's going to monitor everything for us and let us know by email or through the web panel if something has gone awry. Awesome. Next week we're going to set that up on a Raspberry Pi 3. I'm Don't excited. Miss it. Yeah. Thanks everybody for a great show. Hope you had fun at home. Jeff, nice to see you. Sasha over there. You guys have fun? That's what it really boils down to. Yeah, absolutely. I've never not had fun. Never not had fun. You should, I, but that's not a challenge to try and make a show. We're going to have to work on it, folks. <laughs> We're going to have to try harder, Sasha and I. That's right. <laughs> Although I don't know if my mic is working now. Why? It might be out. It's like the last three minutes it's been out. So oh. I'm just talking. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, we should totally put some awesome dub in there, like the bad lip reading. There you go. Oh, I'll my. lip read for it. I'll, oh, I'll do the voice. Good. I'm Sasha. I'm just like sitting over here in the newsroom. <laughs> I want to play replace my grandma with a computer. <laughs> All right, folks, oh, have a great it's week. Again uh, oh, no, oh, good. No dub. We'll see you. See you next Tuesday <laughs> or next Wednesday. Next oh, Wednesday. Oh, oh next Wednesday. Did. No, no. Oh. Wednesday. <laughs> Be here Wednesday. <laughs> oh my goodness. Good night. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>